Promotion and Finance for Enterprise. This short video will take you through the required content that you'll need to complete for your Unit 3 external assessment. Firstly, let's think about and look at what Unit 3 comprises of. Unit 3 is an external exam. It will be two hours long and it contains 60 marks in total. It is a written exam paper, so slightly different to the old paper you may have done, which was electronic based. Questions are going to be based around enterprise scenarios. There'll be financial based questions and there'll be marketing based questions and it's worth 40% of your overall grade. You can take this exam in February or May. So what skills are you going to have to demonstrate? Well, the promotion and finance examination requires you to demonstrate the skills of analysis and be able to interpret information. And you've got to do that in relation to an enterprise. You'll be doing that by making recommendations on strategies to use to improve the performance of an enterprise. What you'll probably notice there is you have different levels of skills. Let's look at them ranked in order. So the assessment objectives and the way your paper be marked is based on these things called AOs. AO1 is the easiest, down to AO4 being the most complex. So for AO1, you'll be demonstrating knowledge. So quite a low level skill. In other words, do you have a good understanding of knowledge and knowledge related around promotion and financial information? AO2 is about interpretation or application of your knowledge towards promotional information and financial information linked to a business enterprise that you'll be given in the examination. AO3 is analysis. In other words, making connections between different factors, influencing an organization or enterprise. And AO4 is what we would probably call evaluation, where you are able to advise, provide recommendations to a given enterprise and how it can improve its performance. And that's how your paper is marked. You clearly want to demonstrate as much of AO4 as possible to get the highest possible grade. So what content is actually covered? Let's go through in more detail. So firstly, you need to make sure that you understand the different methods of promotion which an enterprise can use. You need to make sure that you understand why those methods are suitable relating to the size of the business enterprise. And you need to understand the factors that could impact on the method of promotion that a business selects. So for example, the size of the business, the budget it's got, the target market, how appropriate it is for its product or service. You'll also need to understand how advertising is used to persuade and inform, and you need to understand the aspects of advertising, i.e. the message and the medium. You will also need to understand the different types of advertising methods. So you've got moving image, print, ambient, digital and auditory advertising, as well as needing to know about the different types of sales promotion. For example, coupons, competitions, money off, loyalty incentives, buy one, get one free schemes or bog off and discounts. In addition to that, you'll need to understand what's meant by the term personal selling. So that examples of that would be face to face, telephone, email, video and web conferencing, public relations, sometimes called PR, which would be exhibitions, sponsorship and press releases. And you need to understand direct marketing, things like direct mail, otherwise known as junk mail, which is poorly targeted mail, mail order, catalogues, magazines and telemarketing. You'll need to make sure you understand the purpose of target marketing and the different types of market that exist, so business to business and business to consumer. You'll need to understand what's meant by the term market segmentation and how we segment the market, so demographically by age, race, religion, gender, family size, ethnicity, income, education level and social economic group. So we could look at ACORN profiling. You need to understand geographic the segmentation, which can be done by location, psychographic, which would be social class, attitudes, lifestyles, and maybe your characteristics or traits, and behavioral, things like spending, consumption, usage, loyalty, and the desired benefits you wish to get. Quite a lot of content to cover 
in the marketing aspects. You will then need to also understand some financial information. So for example, you will need to be able to complete and interpret data from the following documents. So invoices, delivery notes, purchase orders, credit notes, receipts, and statement of account. So you'll need to know what each one of those is, how it falls in with the process for a business or enterprise to use. You'll need to also understand the importance of accurate record keeping. In addition to that, you'll need to understand different types of payment methods and the advantages and drawbacks for each one and how it could impact on a business using these methods. For example, cash, credit card, debit card, direct debit, and the new payment technologies that exist. You will need to understand where businesses get their revenue from and the type of costs that they may have. That includes startup costs and operating or running costs, as well as including revenue from sales revenue and sales of assets. You will also need to understand the following terms and be able to calculate these. So turnover, cost of sales, gross profit, expenses, net profit, retained profit, fixed assets and current assets, current liabilities and long-term liabilities, debtors and creditors, net current asset and capital. Quite a lot of complicated context that you've got to cover and understand. In addition to that, you need to understand what's meant by the term a comp statement of comprehensive income. You need to understand its purpose and be able to calculate profit and loss. You will also need to be able to calculate ratios of profitability, which is a gross profit margin and the net profit margin, as well as being able to calculate liquidity using the current ratio and the liquid capital ratio. You will also have to explain the difference between cash and profit and understand the difference between liquidity and profitability. You will need to also understand a statement of financial position, knowing what its purpose is and be able to categorize total assets and liabilities. In addition to that, you'll need to understand cash flow forecasting. So you'll be able to, you will need to be able to complete a cash flow forecast. You'll have to be able to investigate the impacts of a positive and negative cash flow on an enterprise. You'll have to be able to calculate a difference between a cash flow forecast and a cash flow statement, or shall I say work out what the difference is meant between those two terms. Purpose of a cash flow forecast, inflows and outflows, analyze cash flow forecasts and suggest improvements, and consider how maybe changes in inflows and outflows could impact on the enterprise, and focus very much on how timings can impact on cash flow for a business organization. Break even. You will need to understand what's meant by the term break even. And by that, you have to construct a break even chart. You will have to recognize the limitations of break even. You will need to understand and be able to calculate variable, fixed, and total costs. You need to be able to work out and calculate the margin of safety as well as understanding what's meant by that term. Calculate break even using the formula, which you'll need to understand and know. Identify the break even point for a business using the chart, for example. Assess the importance and value of break-even as a planning tool and assess the limitations of a break-even analysis. And finally, you will need to understand sources of business finance. You will need to understand that businesses may use different sources for different purposes and needs and you will need to know the advantages and drawbacks of each of the different sources. For example, owner's funds, retaining profits, loans, credit cards, government grants, higher purchasing and leasing, trade credit, venture capital, and peer-to-peer -peer lending. Yes, there's quite a lot of content to cover here, and you're going to have to work really, really hard to make sure that you can do well in this exam. It's not going to be easy, and it very much ties in with the Level 3 course now, which you may study as well at a vocational level. One of the questions you probably get asked quite a lot as teachers, can I reset? The answer is, yes, you can. However, it's only really once that you can reset this exam, and in my experience as a teacher, resets tend never to do as well as a first time of sitting. So my advice is really focus really hard, work to try and pass the eggs on the first time, believe in yourself, and remember, anything is possible. What I would like to say is, until next time, make sure you keep buzzing.